GT Academy. You're the world's best PlayStation gamers. Can you turn them into racing drivers? Yes! Yes, you can. Oscar, your time at GT Academy is over. Come on. Get your kit together. Hand it back in. Your time at GT Academy has come to an end. Well done. Cheers. Morning, Bradley. Hey, man. I thought I got your seagulls before. Yeah, I could hear them as well. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you reckon we're actually going to be doing today, boys? Um, I've got no idea. Something on a beach. That's, oh, what, yeah. I, that's what I reckon it is. Sand driving Something, dunes. Yes. Maybe in the dunes? Um, do they have dunes? Do they have sand? <laughs> I don't know. Aren't, aren't all UK beaches just rocks? Yeah, yeah probably. Rock Maybe it's rock crawling. <laughs> Stepping out of the bus, we quickly realised we were in a pretty nice beach and a nice little Welsh town. And a lot of a lot of old guys walking around with dogs and things. So it was pretty nice to just be there, really, um, regardless of the competition. We're gathered around with all the other countries. We see Rob and out come these GTRs start drifting around us, which is awesome to see. Let's just put two and two together. GTRs beach, this is going to be a hell of a lot of fun. Welcome to Pendine Sands the home of many land speed record attempts and records themselves. At the Dubai 24 hours, off the racing line, you will find oil, you'll find rubber, and you'll find sand, all very slippery. So this challenge is all about adaptability. Being behind him, the GTRs there, a very powerful car, and on the sand, a pretty loose surface. We knew it would be a pretty challenging day. Uh, personally, off-road stuff hasn't been the most comfortable in the past. So I was probably pretty nervous at this point. You're going to be racing head to head and wheel to wheel against each other. Your mentors will choose the running order at random. The two losers will face each other at the eliminator. Good luck. We drew names out of the hat for this one. So it's Chris versus Michael and Casey versus Brad. This should be really interesting. OK, boys, it's not often we get to drive GTRs on the beach. So let's have some fun with this, shall we? Cool, right, let's do it. Okay, come on, boys. Just do it. Do it! <laughs> when it comes to Michael, I think while in the car we're all pretty serious, he's definitely, I think, it's in it for himself um, a little bit more than the rest of us. Uh, maybe it's just being that little bit younger, he doesn't have the life experience there to realise that while well, this is a competition, um, life goes on outside that. I've driven on a farm, but nothing like this, no. Growing up a farm was brilliant. You know, had all this open space we could use, I'd always use a quad runner. You just could do anything. As soon as we finished school, I went out, got a loan, bought a go-kart straight away. Tracy Stewart was my go-karting mentor, and he has been absolutely monumental in my preparation to come into this. Six to 12 months ago, when I was, a, when I was still racing go-karts, I, I thought I was king of the world. You know, I thought I couldn't be beaten. I've looked back on it and said, you know, I was a bit full of myself back then and, and that hurt me as a driver and I, I didn't improve. I sort of got to a level and then didn't get any better and and it's only been from when I've spoken to him since and, and, and he's told me about what I did wrong and that I've been able to, to get better. I think Michael goes off by himself because I think that's the way that he can deal with the pressure, he can deal with uh, the challenge that's coming up and so far that's actually worked for him. It probably doesn't matter to him too much whether he, he needs to be as close to his teammates because he's racing for himself, really. GTR's on the beach. <laughs> Can't get much better than that. Absolutely. Chris versus Michael in this race. They're our fastest two drivers. I think this is going to be the closest one. We've got Chris in lane one closest to us and Michael in lane two yeah. closest to the ocean. Clean start's essential. Too much wheel spin off the start, that will cost them. Uh, Chris, good, good, start, good start. Really good start. Nothing between them. I come into the last complex and I break too late. I've missed the apex of the corner and I see the flag go flying past me. I realise Michael's already at that final flag. Yes! Yes! 
as they entered the final chicane, yeah. the slower chicane, Chris just carried too much speed in yeah. and it cost him on the way out. Yeah. That's been a big problem with Chris. Everything we've done so far, he has this tendency to go into the corners too quick and be too trigger happy with that throw. As I'm driving back, I start to think what's happened in the race. I know I've made a mistake and I can't change that. But what I can change is what's going to happen in the future. I feel relieved that, that, that I won't be in the Eliminator tomorrow. Um, so you're proud of myself that I was able to pull it together. It, it sucks that, that, that Chris is unfortunately going to be in the Eliminator, but you know, I've got to concentrate on me. Brad's been the biggest surprise for me so far. He started quite slowly, but he's hot on the heels of the other lads. Casey is technically one of our better drivers, but I think he's holding back a little bit. and We want to see him push a little bit more and maybe not panic under pressure. Right now, I feel calm, but I know in my head, Pressure's there. Um, I was actually born in Japan. The family moved to Australia when I was two years old, so I was still very young. Um, I don't have a lot of memories of that time. My mum definitely found it hard to understand what I wanted to do with my life. So it really been, has been a bit of a challenge and it's probably taking a good 10, 15 years for her to understand that this is what I've wanted to do. Hello, I'm a Romiko. I'm a Casey's mama. I hope you will enjoy the experience and come back intact boys. In my family I have two siblings, so one older sister Masaki and a younger sister Mio. Hi, this is Masaki, I'm Keishi's sister. He's been into cars for as long as I can remember. I remember trying to study in high school and he used to be tinkering around with his skyline revving the engine, disturbing the whole neighbourhood. My big weakness is probably nerves. While I'm quite a thoughtful person and that's a positive, the nervous energy is something that through my life has maybe been something that's taken a bit more time to, to harness and, and to understand. Keishi, one. Brad, two. Everything to play for, everything. Five, four, three, two, one. Go. Great start by both yeah. of them, Keishi. Keishi, great, great start. start. Oh, oh, he two sideways, Keishi, two sideways. I guess trying to push that a little bit harder. I did break a little bit deep and the car just got into the slide and I lost a few seconds there. Come back. Are we drifting or are we racing? Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Brad doesn't look very tidy over there though. Okay, it's all about oh, Brad's exit. Oh, no. Oh, Keishi oh, overdriving. Yeah. Woo! I said, was this the moment that Brad would crack? I yeah. was wrong. Oh, Keishi cracked. He was that pressure, I think. Well, the thing is, we've been trying to put a little bit of pressure on Keishi because he needs it. He's keep telling him he needs to push a little bit more, and I think it's, it's awesome. Well, he's pushed too hard, hasn't he? Now. Yeah, I think yeah, it's pressure's on. Uh, more disappointed in myself, really. So yeah, facing Chris the Illuminator, I think I just got to yeah look inside myself and make sure I don't make the same mistake again. Yes. I'm not an eliminator. I, that is such a great feeling. Gave it my all and here I am. Yes. I know how you guys feel yeah. and it is it's, it's a rotten felt, feeling. It's how you felt, what, yesterday? So. Now you've got 24 hours of that feeling where mine was just a sudden jolt of <laughs> adrenaline oh and oh no, yeah. this yeah. is crap. Yeah. Keishi and Chris know that they will now face each other at the eliminator. But first, we have a surprise for all our contestants. It's been a tough week so far for our contestants. Wow! But now they can relax a little and have some fun. They're off to the circus. The gamers weren't expecting this. We've taken them right out of their comfort zone. We're looking at how they deal with the pressure of performing under the spotlight and also how their personalities develop over the course of the day. Do you reckon this is a backup plan if we can't drive? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll find out when we're in amongst it, but yeah. Maybe just adaptability, how quickly we can learn, learn yeah. new skills. Probably also just the attitude towards it, whether we take it seriously or not. Yeah. I think we're always being judged, we're always being watched. So. This is a little bit different to what I think they thought they were coming to do. 
Yeah, I think so. It definitely wasn't what I was expecting. We were all thinking, what are we doing here? You know, it'd probably be judged, but what are they judging for? It was, it was a good sort of shake up to make sure we were all on our toes, I think. While the gamers are relaxing, it's really nice to actually see a bit more of their personality coming through. For the driving, the Mike is the quickest. It's clearly quickest so far, but he's very serious. So do you, think he, do you think he'll relax a little bit? Because this is going to be quite good fun. Yeah, so, Although so. it's going to test their hand-eye coordination, do you think he'll relax enough to enjoy this? The previous days, is so hard for them, but today it's just fun. Ultimately, racing drives require brilliant balance, hand-eye coordination and dexterity. And today's challenge will test all those three. Right, Chiyo. Yeah. Enough of the serious stuff. I got you something. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. <laughs> so first up, we start uh, juggling. We, I immediately get get into it pretty easily. Uh, it's a bit of hand-eye coordination. Uh, I noticed I was paired up with Kishi basically and yeah, he was kind of struggling, which made me feel a little bit better. My driving is a lot better than my juggling. Watch any top professional driver. Before they drive, they will often warm up and juggling is a popular way to do that. Nico Rosberg does it. Max Verstappen does it. Hey, even I do it from time to time. Gio, go and show him how it's done. Look at that. <laughs> it's only Chris has two. Yeah, Chris is the only one who can do two. Go, 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 go. Look at that. The, the Chris is teaching Michael. It's quite good to teach Michael uh, a bit of the juggling. My experience as a tennis coach uh, has allowed me to, to build up those skills and I think my hand-eye coordination is quite good and juggling is just another part of that. I seem to take to it pretty, pretty quickly. When I was in high school and university, and even the first few uh, years of, of working full time, I was c coaching tennis, and it's 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 an amazing job because you're helping people, and having a kid come down who who can't hit a ball over the net, and then being able to do that is is a really great feeling. Yeah, being a tennis coach definitely shows my dedication uh, and my passion. My family and friends would probably say I'm a very passionate person, uh, pretty pretty determined. They know that once I set my mind to anything, that I'll, I succeed at. Push up, push up. When you push up, I guess enjoying the challenges really, and having the silks there and having to climb those. We're having a bit of banter straight away of who who will see out or who'd be able to get to the top. So yeah, we're all pushing ourselves regardless of the relaxed nature of the competition and the challenge at this stage. We're all still the competitive edge was still out. So I head up, and I'm actually realizing, hang on. I'm holding on for dear life here. I'm about 50, 10, 15 metres up in the air. I could fall and break my neck if I, if I slipped. There's no way in hell that four weeks ago I would have told myself, you're going to be in the international campaign to be a professional race car driver. I would have told myself, no way in hell. There's not enough horsepower on this baby. Keep going, you fatty. Level nine, five. We're not eating until you vomit. to see the boys not being serious all the time. Yeah, they are having fun and they are doing well. So I think they are all four very good. Yeah, they're all smiling, they're all happy. Good job, boys. Yeah, maybe only the Michael was the scared, scared the, the, on the high press. Yeah, no, everyone else, shut up. <laughs> he, do, he do the quickly and quickly back. If I was being assessed on those things that I was doing, okay, I was being assessed. I thought I did really well, um, but at the end of the day, it was a whole heap of fun. I, I was, it was a good day. So during the whole circus challenge, uh, while it is fun and while it is still challenging and they're new skills, uh, my mind's really still on the next serious challenge in the car because I know that's what counts. Um, so really in the back of my mind, it's about trying to collate everything I've learned over the last few days and really try and get the, the most out of it. Oh, good morning. How are you sleep? Yeah, good yeah. sleep. Yeah, slept well. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Are you getting nervous a little bit? Yeah, I think a little bit nervous. Yeah. Um, Definitely a little yeah. bit nervous. Yeah, the next one is the elimination challenge for you guys. So, but, you know, just this is a, the big challenge. I hope you can do your best. You boys drive the GTR, the truck, 
it's a big power and um, heavy front and wheel, four wheel drive. So I think the straight line is so fast, but on the corner, it's easy to make an understeer. Uh, so as I'm on the bus with Gio and Chris, it's just um, Gio taking us through, I guess, a few more finer points of the track and just explaining the challenge a little bit in a little bit more detail. Because there's more power, the braking is going to have to be heavier. Yes. And I guess the more weight you put on the front end, the more it's going to it's gonna want to understeer. Knowing I'm racing Chris already, um, I'm feeling pretty nervous in one sense because I know he's very quick, uh, but at the same time, I'm looking into myself and I, I know personally that I've got the speed there. I, I, I just can't afford to make a mistake. I bet the guys are feeling really nervous. So I know exactly how, what they're going through. I've uh, just been watching them for the past couple of hours and they've been lying on their beds, uh, just thinking about the race that's coming up. But yeah, they're just trying to think about not making a mistake and hopefully hopefully they're not overthinking it because if they do, then that's what's going to happen. They'll make a mistake. And focusing my energy on things that I'm doing at the present time is a far better way than thinking about the challenge that's going to come up and, and even thinking about what happened that put me into this eliminator. I think I've processed what actually happened and I know what I did wrong. I'm going to make sure that I don't do it again. At the Eliminator, everything counts. The race is short, only two laps in duration. Even the smallest error could be costly. Keishi, Chris, as we know, you lost at Pendine Sands. So you find yourself here, back at the Eliminator. driving Nissan GTRs once again, but this time in a straight fight for survival. Give it everything you have. There is no second chance. Do your best. Remember guys, the last one over the line leaves us. Go and get ready. Good luck. The whole week's flashing before me at this stage, um, knowing all the challenges that we've already done and, and just looking at and trying to replay all the advice I've got from the coaches up to this point. Um, so just trying to stay calm, but at the same time, making sure I've got all those bits in my head in the right place. Keishi's a very strong competitor. To beat him is definitely going to take good driving, consistent driving, and not making any mistakes. At the Eliminator, everything counts. There is no second chance. 22nd warning, massive moment for Chris and Keishi. One yeah. of them will be leaving us in less than three minutes. Chris versus Keishi, both very fast, both good technically. This is gonna be tougher than both. It's such a short race, only two laps. If they make even the smallest mistake, they're not gonna have chance to recover. One red light on, two red lights on. Go! Good clean start. Awesome, very good. Nothing between them at the moment. I'm pretty calm as the light goes green. Uh, just concentrating on a nice smooth start and I get away pretty well. Um, and even the first few corners in the first half a lap, I'm pretty happy with it. Chris is trying harder. That's gonna cost him as well. Heading into the final lap, I guess my last proper braking point, I've hit it all pretty well, but every time I get on the throttle, it's not giving me the power I want when I want it, and I'm having to wait half a second to a second before the car's actually accelerating away. And I know every time this happened, um, I get a bit more nervous, a bit more anxious. I'm not sure at this stage, I guess, it, whether Chris is having the same problems. Oh, Chris, I hit. Chris really pushing hard, really pushing hard. Go ahead, this is the final half lap. This is a really close race. One mistake from Chris in case he's right back in it. It's going to be massively close. Yeah. Massively close. Chris by the finest of margins. As I'm crossing the line, I already know um, that I've lost the race. Bye, look, buddy. So on that cool down lap, really, it was a bit of a, while well, I was disappointed and I could feel the emotions kind of 
coming up in behind me. Um, it was really just about trying to take in the whole week at that point. Um, and yeah, just being proud of what I've done so far, I guess. Eliminations are never easy. They might be the nicest person in the world, but if they're not performing either on or off the track, they have to go. Down to the final three, how do you feel? Really good. Um, the two guys that are in the top three with me are just, they're so fast. So it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be another one of those challenges, but I've tasted elimination now. Don't wanna go back. Don't wanna go back and I'm ready to good. take them on. I guess the disappointment's obviously not winning. Um, but yeah, just the, the amount of time it's taken. Um, I know I've pretty much done everything I could um, before arriving. Um, I knew it was just about doing everything I can, so I can't look back and go, OK, I wish I'd done this. OK, yeah. 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 Good job, mate. <laughs> Getting out of the car um, and seeing Gio for the first time, um, I think we quick, quickly learned in this past week our, I guess, our start into motorsport was very similar. Um, his parents didn't really support or understand what he wanted to do, and I was very much the same. And I think, yeah, straight away, him, when we kind of looked at each other, um, we both kind of got a bit emotional at that point because he knew how much I wanted it. And I think, yeah, our struggles were, were very similar um, in the beginning anyway. Well, you did a really great job, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah. Sorry, man. It's, uh, right. Your journey is just finished now. That's so, right. but yeah, that was a great memory. Yeah, for you. definitely. No, Chris is a fast driver. Yeah, you know, everybody likes you, yeah. uh, your personality, and you push really hard and uh, uh, until this race camp. Yeah. I, I, I saw everything you did. Yeah. I think uh, it's make you strong, definitely. make you stronger, and yeah, yeah, keep growing, keep definitely. growing, keep pushing, definitely. yeah. I'm definitely not going to give up. I think if I gave up now, um, yeah, I don't think I'd forgive myself, I guess, looking back on it. Um, so, yeah, this isn't the end.